you so the very quickly i would like to just take you through the observations that we have had in the last decade in the power system so here the slide that i am projecting before you it presents the maximum minimum and average demand pattern the left side in the last uh, couple of uh, last decade so the an interesting observation in this you would like to see sorry, sorry that vivek actually i think we did, we could not hear the initial slides as well Probably is it visible on... yes now it is visible please please go ahead okay i just wanted to share a couple of slides uh, which highlights our observations in the power system for the last uh, uh, decade and we also had done some analysis uh, how is the likely future and what are the requirements that uh, we need to do so here the first slide explains and uh, illustrates the maximum minimum and average demand so the top one red color graph it shows the maximum daily demand that we have seen in the all india grid and the lower green one green graph indicates the minimum demand for the all india grid for the last 10 years you would see that the rate of rise of the maximum of daily maximum demand is much much higher than the minimum demand so this pattern is also evident if we look at the daily all india load factors here the trend is declining which means that the uh, the installed capacity that we have had uh, there is a decrease in the load factors now if you uh, compare if you try to derive the difference of maximum and the minimum demand that we see daily the difference between them earlier in 2010 was somewhere around 20 gigawatt which has now increased to around 70 gigawatts which means that every day we have we need to flex Uh, the generation we need to ramp up the generation and increase it by 70 gigawatts during peak hours and ramp it down back to a technical minimum level which comes down to 70 gigawatts then apart from this there are certain exceptional events one of them uh, occasionally we uh, hear around there is a call for switching of lights for earth hour and a similar exceptional event happened on 5th uh, april 9 pm 9 uh, minute event wherein there was a simultaneous reduction in the demand and there was a requirement to meet that uh, fall in demand and then rise in demand immediately after uh, uh, everybody switches on the lights back so such events require lot of flexibilities from the uh, generating station side so apart from this india has also Uh, embarked upon a very aggressive and ambitious program of integrating renewable energy particularly uh, solar energy so in this case as you can see uh, several studies have also been conducted that what would be the kind of uh, uh, scenario in 2930 when we would have around 450 gigawatts of renewable in the grid and uh, a, a study was conducted by ca and we were also associated and it was found that unless we have some adequate capacity which can turn uh, uh, go down and absorb that renewable by uh, backing down generation that is the conventional generation it would be very difficult to absorb all the re that would be available during midday uh, in that scenario and the figures turned out to be like the more we are able to reduce the technical minimum of the thermal fleet the lesser would be the re curtailments so all this was anticipated and the trends were trends were visible and there was a very welcome uh, amendment done in iegc in 2017 which mandated lowering of the technical minimum of the thermal stations of uh, interstate generating stations uh, from 70% to 55% so here i am just exhibiting two graphs the left side graph shows that at the interstate level now we have started pushing down the operating level of the thermal stations to as low as 55% however there are still several generating units particularly at the intra state at the within the state embedded in the state uh, level wherein they are still operating at uh, a higher level so it results in 
uh, maybe uh, high frequency operations and insecure operations during certain times of the day then another very important development that has happened that crc had allowed us to undertake a pilot project on security constrained economic dispatch wherein it tries to uh, bring in kind of all india uh, merit order operation and cause savings by uh, maximizing the generation at the cheapest stations and um, if not required backing down at the costliest stations so whenever these optimizations are being run on a daily basis uh, there is a huge amount of saving that we have been able to realize but the constraints that we are facing is that often the costlier stations get hit by their technical minimum levels so uh, there is a need to lower at a lower the technical minimums further even from 55 to maybe further lower down up to say 40% as mandated in the ca technical standards now apart from this there is also a requirement that uh, the variability of demand was already there and with uh, the variable and intermittent generation non dispatchable generation coming into the grid we have more and more uh, uncertainties built into the grid and to ensure secure secure and reliable operation what we need is reserves now estimating those reserves is again a new challenge that has come up and we at the operation levels at uh, in coordination with uh, different rldcs and other stakeholders we are trying to create a system wherein we can estimate the reserve requirements and then there is a draft by crc also which says Uh, which uh, proposes that these reserves need to be procured from the market so the new requirement that is emerging that we need to work we need uh, algorithms we need systems by which we can estimate the reserve requirement and also have a mechanism by which we can dispatch those reserves as and when required to secure the system the third aspect is as the challenges are increasing the major the load dispatch centers and also other institutions statutory bodies the planners the regulators all need to collaborate together to facilitate this transition towards the green grid so the uh, the realization that flexibility is the key to achieve that transition has to percolate down in all the organizations all the people associated all the people working at the ground level right up to the topmost decision makers so uh, the point that i'm trying to make is that the transition is uh, not a very easy it's certainly a very challenging uh, challenging one and uh, the key elements that can facilitate this transition just few of them that i'm trying to highlight uh, in this short presentation to lower the turn down levels of thermal generation fleet better tools for demand re forecasting dimensioning of reserves and a mechanism to dispatch them and last but not the least the capacity building to institutionalize the flexibility requirements to achieve that energy transition thank you very much